this blog you'll learn about the key sources of objective evidence we can utilise during the audit process. As a result, you'll be able to develop clear and concise audit findings supported by objective evidence. Our key sources of objective evidence really are looking at records, interviewing people, making observations, look at related documents and documentation as well. We already established in previous blogs that yes, we're there to audit against pre-established requirements. As an auditor, we need to think about Okay, for requirement number one, type of evidence might I focus on? Usually it's a mix of those evidence sources versus requirement number two, we might look at a different source of evidence there to approach that. Just gonna go through an example to help you understand how these different sources of evidence can tell us different things. Now, I'm not much of an artist, but if this is a roadworks crew conducting some roadworks in the main street in your town, they've set up some traffic management barriers, as you can see. Let's start with a simple example. What we're trying to explore is a requirement in the procedure that says all staff need to complete the safety induction before they commence work on site. Now, number one, records are critically important. They're a key source of objective evidence because we can observe what's happening on the work site today, but we can't observe the past, as well as they're you know, verifiable by history. Yes, if those three staff members started six months ahead of other staff members who only started last week, we look at some induction records from this month, three months ago, six months ago, we want to see that safety induction is happening consistently when and where it needs to. Second example might be for a manufacturing facility and we do some incoming inspection and testing on our raw materials. Well, again, let's not just look at whether that's happening effectively today. Through records, we can start to look at the history and request records from those different time periods so that we can see that has that been performed consistently over time. By verifiable, and we're out there to gather objective evidence. If people dispute the finding or anything like that, we can go back to the evidence that demonstrates why that's either a conformance or a non-conformance. Let's come back to our example of the roadworks crew. So we've seen that all staff have been completed the safety induction. By interview, we can start to interview some of the staff. Now it's really important, it's not a job assessment or a personal test of them. We're auditing our system. Yes, everyone's done the induction, but we can start to interview them, ask questions about well, what are some of the hazards associated with traffic in that kind of environment and when and where and how should they set up the different control measures. It's not a personal test of them. But what that can help identify from a systems perspective, have we ensured people are aware of that? Can be cases I've seen where, yes, 100% of staff have been inducted, it just wasn't a very good induction. Didn't really educate the team on what the hazards and the required controls were, for example. Observation can tell us something different again. So by talking about records, talked about interviewing people, we get a verbal response. If I join the site, here's me. I might be able to answer your audit interview questions and it might seem that, yeah, Andrew seems to know a little bit about placement of traffic barriers, but I might have just read the safe work procedure 10 minutes before you got there. I might not actually be able to demonstrate that I, that I can actually do it. So again, it's not a personal test. But yes, by observation, we've interviewed people who could say, well, yeah, could you show us how you set the traffic barriers up or, you know, why have you put them a certain distance? Things like that. We can explore it by observation. Can people actually do it? If I understand what the hazards are and what the required controls are and they can actually do it, that's an excellent audit outcome, particularly if there's records to back that up. In our next blog, we're going to come back and explore the question, well, how many records do we need to look at? How many people do we need to interview? I.e. how much evidence is enough to determine conformance or non-conformance? If you like this video, then hit the like button below. Why not even share it with your friends? Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Appreciate you listening and keep an eye out for our next video.